Hey, what's up guys? It's Austin from Jones Bros Garage and it's been a while since I've actually done a moto vlog but I got a good topic I wanted to talk about today and I got the keys to my brother's Yamaha R6 so let's get on with the video. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Wow guys, it feels good to be on a 600. It's been a while since I've rode a Japanese 600. Huge shout out to my brother. I'll link his Instagram in the description below and I'll put it up on screen right now. But huge shout out to him for letting me take his bike out for this video. And also, I'll put a link to my own Instagram. Ooh, got a little squirrely on that downshift. That back tire got a, got a little kick out of it. I know there's a lot of riders out there, well, future riders, I should say, who are looking into a first bike and they want to get a 600. And they're kind of dead set, you know? Like, no matter what I or anybody else says, they're not going to change their mind. So, typically, I'm going to recommend you don't start on a 600. I just really don't think it's a good starter bike or fitting for a beginner. But I know that some people are going to do it regardless. And you know what? That's It's not the end of the world. People do what they want to do. I just want to make people aware of the risks of doing that so anyhow instead of trying to convince one way or the other I'm just going to give five pros and five cons to starting on a 600 cc motorcycle the first pro of getting a 600 as your first bike is the highway if you plan on riding a lot of highway then there is an argument that a 600 could be decent to start on um when you're a more experienced rider a 600 isn't the best for the highway just because you really have to wind it out to get power and you'll find yourself downshifting but compared to most people's beginner bikes like say a ninja 400 this is just going to be leagues better on the highway you can see right now I'm going about 70 miles per hour and I'm not even at 7,000 RPMs in 6. Now in 5th I'm at still below 7. 4th uh, about 7,500. 3rd gear a little over 8. Now you guys can see you know if you're riding like a 300 then you're going to be screaming on the highway you're going to be high in the rev range and you're always going to be just absolutely thrashing on your motor so starting on a 600 could be nice because you're going to have a lot more versatility on the freeway not only is your top speed higher <coughs> not that you should be worried about that on a first bike but that just means that at any given speed your rpm is going to be lower and the engine is going to be much happier and you're not going to need to have to rev the absolute piss out of it to go 80 miles per hour now the second pro of starting on a 600 like this you know especially talking about modern bikes is technology now yes new 300s and 400s and bikes in that class now are starting to have abs as standard or you know even as an option but on 600s a lot of them just come with abs and they come with rider modes a lot of the times not that there's not a absolutely massive difference between like b mode and a mode but they do make a slight difference and that's something you're not usually going to find on a beginner bike and the big thing is traction control now this bike that i'm sitting on here has traction control and it's it's a really nice feature to have especially for an inexperienced rider because <laughs> you could run into some wet leaves or gravel you know 
things that we all run into on the road and that trash control is going to help you out so it's definitely nice to have and not only speaking about technology as in actual technology like technological advancements also the parts are of a higher quality like your braking distance on a 600 from a given speed is going to be less than it is on a stock 300 or you know 400 whatever you start on and that's just a product of the fact that these bikes are really built for the track which is why i say they're not really suitable for beginners but there are some pros that obviously they get beefier brakes than a typical beginner bike would get so you're going to get better brakes you're going to get the traction control you're most likely going to get abs and you're probably going to get rider modes and those are all things that you might or probably won't get on say a 300 or a 400 or a typical beginner bike now the third pro to starting on a 600 like this you know a super sport is the committed ergonomics and there's many reasons why this is a con but we'll touch on this later and right now we're going to look at it as a pro because well first of all let me just inform you if you're watching this video you probably already know this but maybe you don't super sport motorcycles like an r6 jixer 600 cbr 600 double r ninja 636 etc they have very committed ergonomics and what that means is they're designed to put you in a position that's optimal for racing on a track now what that includes is instead of bars these bikes have clip-ons where you can see on this bike the bars or the clip-ons are actually below the top of the fork they're very low and they're at an angle as well and your legs where, where your actual feet are where the pegs are they're actually a little bit behind you and the bars are a bit of a reach so your back is hunched over your legs are a little bit behind you and they're crunched up the pegs are very high so you could get more of a lean angle and what this creates is just the optimal position to be in for racing <coughs> now the reason this can be such a pro <coughs> is because if you want a sport bike then you know what you're about if you want a sport bike then you want to ride sporty you know you want everything that comes with owning a sport bike <clears throat> and when you buy something like a ninja 400 a ninja 650 even you know an r3 they don't have committed ergonomics like that they have actual bars you know something more similar to what you would see on um you know not necessarily a dirt bike but it's the same concept they have bars and they're more upright you sit upright the pegs are lower you just don't get that optimal seating position for sporty riding and if you're thinking about buying a 600 that's probably something that you definitely want <clears throat> now the fourth big pro of owning a 600 as your first bike and you know i think that this goes without saying is they look badass <clears throat> not only do they usually have good design language like for instance this r6 is it's just gorgeous i, I mean but then again an r3 looks pretty similar but what i'm really referring to is the size you have that big meaty rear tire and it's just a very you know dominant assertive kind of stance that these these bikes have they 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 have a presence to them because they're bigger and they're badder and they just look neat that big meaty rear tire is really something that sets apart the look of a true sport bike from a beginner sport bike and you just can't argue the fact that 600s are just gorgeous they're beastly looking bikes you know 99% of the time they're probably going to look better than something that's made for a beginner and 
that goes for pretty much all 600s except maybe the Jixxer. Sorry, Jixxer bros. It's just not my cup of tea, but that might be your thing. But even the Jixxer has the bigger, meatier tire, and it's a bigger bike, and it just it has more presence on the road than something like a Jixxer 250, you know, which is just, it looks kind of like a toy, especially if you're a bigger rider. Now guys, the final pro that I want to talk about, and I think this is a big one for a lot of people, is you're not going to need to upgrade as soon as you would if you would buy, say, a Ninja 400. And not that you ever need to upgrade, but most riders want to. Like, uh, I had a Ninja, well I started on a Ninja 250, and I was, you know, just getting the basics of riding, so I didn't really care to upgrade. But then, I took a little break from riding and I got a Ninja 650. Now, <coughs> a lot of my friends had super sport motorcycles, and I'm just, you know, a speed junkie. So, after one season on my Ninja 650, I wanted more. I wanted more power. You know, the bike felt quick, but it just didn't give me that thrill I was looking for. So, that's what I'm talking about. If you start on, say, you know, a 400, even make a 650, for example, then you're probably going to end up wanting to upgrade. And if you're thinking about getting a 600 as your first bike, you're definitely going to want to upgrade. Because, like I mentioned earlier, you know what you're about. You want sportiness, you want speed. So, you're going to start out on a 300 or a 400. And, yeah, you'll get the ropes of riding. But, after about a season or so, you're really just going to crave that bigger power. So, if you start on something like a 600, you know, you could go a long time without having those feelings. Because... It's going to take you a season or two just to get used to riding and then a season or two after that <laughs> to really get a hold on being able to use some of the power of this bike. And you're not ever going to be able to use all of the power of a 600 on the street. Even if you're a super experienced rider, you probably can't use all of the power of a 600 on the street. There's very few riders that can, you know. For example, Max Wrist, and that's a good example. Now, nothing against Max Wrist, and I do enjoy his videos, but I think you guys would agree with me that his riding is very reckless. <coughs> now, he is a decent rider. You know, he's a far leap from where you're gonna be when you first start riding. But the point I'm getting at is, even if you can use all the 600, whoo, on the street that doesn't necessarily mean you should and 99% of riders can't anyway I know I can so it's going to be a long time before you outgrow this bike the only time you're going to go to outgrowing a 600 is when you just want more thrill in a straight line and you miss that feeling of being scared because you just don't get that anymore but what I could say is I've been riding super sport motorcycles. This is my second season with a super sport. And I currently ride a Panigale V2, which has a fair bit more power than this R6. And this R6 is still somewhat intimidating. You know, you still gotta watch how much throttle you give it. And yeah, it's definitely still a thrill. If I personally owned this R6 at this given moment, I wouldn't really be interested in upgrading it. So that just gives you an idea. I've rode a lot of different bikes. I've been riding for a number of years and now I've been riding super sports for two years. And I, I still am happy with a 600. Okay guys, so 
some of those pained me to say because I'm usually a huge advocate of not starting on a 600 but what I will say is I do have a lot of friends who did start on 600s and they turned out successful you know they're pretty good riders they have some pretty good habits um and they haven't wrecked I do have one friend who started on a Jixxer 750 and he wrecked it on the way home and he was in a coma and we actually didn't think he was going to make it but you know that that just that just goes to show the point I'm about to make is that for some people starting on a 600 is okay I don't think it's optimal I don't think it's the best idea but I think you could be okay and you could enjoy yourself and learn the fundamentals of riding pretty much but that's for people who are very responsible and if you want a 600 as your first bike because you think that a beginner bike is too slow then you're probably not in the responsible crowd and I'm not judging you because you know I'm not the most responsible rider like I'm not going to say that I always go the speed limit and all of that I, I don't I don't think that most riders of sport bikes do and I'm so thankful that I didn't start on a 600 because I really think it would have gotten me into trouble I think I probably would have laid it down, which is, I mean, would have been very fortunate. Luckily, I've never laid down a street bike before yet. But, uh, you know, I'm not somebody, I, I don't think it would have been good for me to start on a 600, but I have friends that have started on 600s and turned out good. So I think you kind of just have to know your own limits. If you're somebody who really does just crave speed and power, you know, whether you're a car guy already or you just know that you like thrill and you like living on the edge, starting on a 600 can definitely be problematic for you. And we're going to go ahead and get into some of the cons of starting on a 600. So the first big con of starting on a 600 Super Sport or, you know, any Super Sport motorcycle really is the price. Now, this kind of goes along with my last point where I said that you're not going to need to upgrade a suit. But, you know, a lot of people say that and I just, I have a really good kind of counterpoint to that. Yeah, it is true that you're not going to want to upgrade for, you know, a longer time. But you have to, you know, I'm going to give you guys a little math lesson. You have to think about the fact that a 600 the tires cost more because it has larger tires. They take more oil, so oil is going to cost more. Up front, if you're buying new, which you may or may not be, obviously the bike is a lot more expensive than like a 300 would be. Um, and then your insurance is going to be more. Just everything is going to cost more. You know, if you start on like a Ninja 400, for example and you keep it for one season um when you go to resell it you're obviously probably going to lose money and there are cases where if you buy like a used ninja 250 and resell it a year later you might actually make money but let's just assume the bike's going to depreciate and you're going to lose money your first year of riding then you're going to go to upgrade to a 600 so yeah there you lost money right but think about all those extra costs of the 600 that I just listed you know they add up especially insurance and especially if you're a younger rider then the cost of insurance might actually be more for one year of a 600 than the amount that a proper beginner bike would depreciate if you if you understand what I'm saying I'm basically saying that in the long term it would be more expensive to start on a 600 than it would be just to start on a beginner bike and then upgrade. And I feel like a lot of people really don't take that into consideration because yes, everything does cost more on a 600 than it will on, you know, say a 400 or it even, it will cost more than a Ninja 650 or an FZ07. Like super sport motorcycles are just going to cost more, especially when it comes to insurance. Now the second con I want to talk about is, 
you're not going to be able to use all of this bike. I kind of touched on it earlier, but you're never going to be able to use all of this 600. But if you're a beginner rider, oh my god, you're not even going to be able to use, you know, one tenth, one fifteenth probably of a 600cc super sport. If you can't even use all of a 250 yet, how are you going to use all of a 600? So when you first get this thing, if it's your first bike, it really is kind of like overkill or a waste of power because you're obviously you're not going to be able to use it at all. And if you try to, or you get overconfident, then you're probably going to get hurt or you're going to get in trouble. And that point right there leads me into my third point, which kind of goes along with that, is that you're not really going to be able to learn the fundamentals as well. And you're probably not going to be as good of a rider if you start on a 600 as you would have been if you just started on a 300 or a 400, something in that range. Now, you got to understand with these clips, clip-ons and these ergonomics and all of that, it's going to be a lot harder to do small maneuvers like um, moving through parking lots and stuff like that, which is already going to be a struggle for a beginner. And then talk about learning throttle control. It's so much easier to learn throttle control on a smaller bike than it is on a bike like this. Because if you're too touchy on the throttle on one of these, if you're in a lower gear, it's going to pick the wheel up or it's going to break traction, first of all, which is obviously its own set of problems. But you, you're also going to be going rapidly fast, you know, in the blink of an eye. So you might be coming up to a turn and you don't have good throttle control and you're giving it a little bit too much and you realize you're coming in too hot and you don't have good fundamentals of riding yet because you're just a beginner rider and that causes panic situations and panic situations are what is really going to get you into big trouble when you're first starting to ride because pretty much all of your basic natural instincts are wrong on a motorcycle like um you're coming too hot around a turn your, your instincts going to be oh grab the brakes well no that's actually incorrect or you know something runs out in the road or there's a big pothole and your mind just wants to stare at it because you want to avoid it but then that car causes target fixation and you actually end up heading towards what you're trying to avoid these are all things that, that they're going to be harder to get down when you're starting on a bike like this not only because this bike is uh is bigger and the ergonomics aren't as friendly but also the fact that you're going to be so worried about the power and trying not to kill yourself <laughs> revving this bike out and trying to be easy on the throttle you're going to be worried about all of these things and that's just a whole list of things that you're not even worrying about if you start on what i would call a proper beginner bike and you can really just focus more on the fundamentals not to mention they're lighter so they're going to be easier to turn instead of clip-ons they have bars so they're easier to do you know small maneuvers on like u-turns it's just everything that you're going to learn as a beginner it's going to be more of a challenge to learn on a 600. riding around a parking lot like this when you first start riding riding through let's say the walmart parking lot it's pretty intimidating and as you guys can see you know i'm just doing some slow speed stuff just kind of letting the bike idle around and this is going to take a lot of practice when you first start riding because there's there's something called speed inertia and what speed inertia is is that well for two wheels at least the faster you go the more balanced your bike is going to be so when you're going slow like this you don't have a lot of balance and now when you're starting on a 600 it's 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 bigger it's heavier the ergonomics aren't very comfortable the bars are very tight and they don't have a good turning radius um the throttle is a lot touchier because it's got a lot more power the brakes are touchier because they're beefier <laughs> do you see what i'm getting at 
it, it's going to make learning how to do these basic little tasks so much harder. Just feathering the clutch and feathering that back brake to go slow. It's going to be so much more of a challenge to learn how to do that on a bigger bike like this. So I started on a 250 and then a 650 and I've had my WR250R and cruisers and all these other bikes and I, I've worked my way up the ladder to, to hop onto super sports like these and I feel like I'm a pretty decent rider for the time that I've spent riding. I'm not saying that I'm the greatest rider or even that I'm a great rider. I'm just saying for the amount of time that I've rode, I do think I'm a great rider. And I think I really owe that to moving up the ladder and progression from little bike to big bike. Just because like, you're coming up to a turn. This bike is heavier and bigger. And it's going to be harder to chuck through turns. You're more worried about throttle control. But the example I want to give you guys is I have a group of friends that I always ride with and a couple of them started on 600s and don't get me wrong they're good riders they have some good habits like I mentioned earlier but I have this friend Alex shout out to Alex and he has an RC 390 <laughs> and let me tell you guys he's quick on that RC 390 granted he has experience on dirt bikes but the RC390 was his first true street bike. And he could absolutely haul ass around twisties. He, him on his RC390, my friends who haven't been riding for a really long time and started on 600s, they actually struggle to keep up with him. And which is pretty comical, but it's actually a very common thing that happens with riders. Um in that's just because of the fact that he started on that 390, he was able to learn and progress faster than them. It's not going to leave you as much room for excitement in the future of your riding career. Now, what I'm talking about when I say that is if you start on a 600, okay, what do you have to look forward to? To get that, that feeling of thrill and speed and frankly just being scared you know all you really have to look forward to then is a 1000 there's not much else like that's it so you know you might cut a year off of your excitement of riding or however long by starting on a 600 because let's say you started on a ninja 400 or a ninja 650 I used to think my Ninja 650 was so fast. When I first got it, full throttle, it scared me. It, it was thrilling. But then I, I, I got that itch for more and I started riding a 600. <laughs> and it's not even comparable. Like now, a Ninja 650 is just, it's not intimidating at all. Don't get me wrong, it's quick and it's a fun, great bike, but it just, it doesn't feel fast anymore. And my brother picked up this R6 before I bought my, my Panigale. And when I used to ride this, I had my Ninja 650 at the time. This thing was terrifying. It, it just felt brutally powerful and it completely gave me that thrill again that I had when I first got my Ninja 650. And then, I bought a Panigale V2, which is kind of like a 750 class, you could say. A step between a 600 and a liter bike. And I started riding that, and that just feels brutally fast all over again. And I hop back on this 600, and now it's not as intimidating. Do you see the... Do you see what I'm trying to say here is... You start on a 600, you're missing out on a portion of that because it's going to give you less to look forward to down the road in your riding career. If you've always wanted a 600, then wouldn't it just feel so rewarding and great if you learned the fundamentals of riding on a smaller bike and then you rewarded yourself with a 600? You know, you would just feel so good about yourself and be so excited to have a new bike. And you'd feel that power that you've been craving. It's just a different world. You know, maybe you get decent at taking turns on your 
your RC 390 or you're going to Ninja 400, you're getting pretty decent corner carving. And then you jump up to a 600 and you can transfer those skills over. But you have that thrill of the power. And I just, I really think you're, you're cutting your riding career, your, your excitement to get onto a bigger bike. You're just cutting that short by starting on a 600 because you can never undo what you've been through. Like if you've rode a 600 for some time or you've owned a, well, if you've owned a 600, then you're eventually going to get adjusted to it. And 600s are never just going to give you that feeling of thrill and terror like they first did. Which, huh, little stall there. Which for me is a big thing because I like that thrill. It's, it's why I ride. I honestly, I like that feeling of terror. <laughs> so for me, starting on a 600 just seemed like a bad idea. And I'm so happy I did it because it gave me something to look forward to down the road. Now the last con I want to talk about is kind of cliche and you're going to hear it from everybody and I'm sure you've heard it a million times but this thing just has too much power for a beginner and it, it's it's going to get you in trouble unless you're very restrained and very responsible which most people aren't <laughs> especially you know I'm going to say most sport bike riders aren't especially if you want to buy a bike like this as your first bike you probably aren't i'm not saying it's impossible because i have friends that have done it but what i'm going to tell you is below 8,000 rpms this bike it's pretty tame like that was almost full throttle but when you get above those 8,000, it's brutal not <laughs> that is not something that's good for a beginner and you could say oh i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be really light on the throttle but there's the problem that yeah well what if you make a mistake number one and you whiskey throttle this bike is <laughs> gonna flip backwards to the moon or it's gonna send you into uh, a guardrail or a wall or something at you know about 90 miles per hour um and the second thing is how are you not going to be tempted by that you know you're going to be tempted to push the bike you're going to be tempted to see what that power band feels like and you really quickly could get into a situation where you're riding above your skill level which is pretty much the worst thing you could do on a sport bike is right above your skill level and I really just feel like starting on a 600 puts you in such a position where that's more than likely going to happen to you a lot <laughs> as you're progressing I, I'm kind of going to jump on the bandwagon here and say that I really do think that the power of these bikes is a con um there's a lot more room for air if you start on a 400 or even a 650 because a 650 you could give it a lot of throttle and not not a whole lot's going to happen but on this thing it's going to pick the wheel up or it's going to lose traction you know it's just it's too much power for sure and your temptation on a bike like this as a beginner best case scenario you might pick up some tickets um worst case scenario you're going to wreck and that's just that's just the truth unless you're a very restrained and very responsible person but uh that's basically it guys so if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like i really appreciate it if you have any questions or you know just anything leave it in the comments i answer all my comments and i'd really appreciate it more than anything if you guys could subscribe my current goal is 1000 so if you want to see more content like this, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for checking out my video.